Hi everybody, this is Alchemist 2, and I'm back again with another series review. This is the final episode of Season 1 of Sinbad. And I have to admit, this is probably um, my third favorite episode. Um, my favorite episodes um, in the list would be uh, Fiend or Friend, The Old Man in the Sea, and then this episode, which was called... Um, Landed dead, and then this one we see an alternate version of Sinbad's life. So it's sort of like an Arabian version of It's a Wonderful Life in a way. <laughs> Oddly, um, it's also an Arabian version of Dante's Inferno. Um, I won't say why, but it's very intriguing. And again, we get to see the characters as incarnations of certain attributes of humanity, uh, flaws, or their uh, beneficence or benevolence that they have, or maleficence. It, it just depends on what they have more of in their character. Um, I thought it was very interesting that um, Taryn actually turned out to have a heart. As I thought, for the longest time, she throughout the series, spoiler alert, she was actually uh, pursuing Sinbad. Um, and she is looking for her daughter because in this particular episode, her her daughter in the land of the of the land of the living, in Basra, she's dying of the plague, and it's it's very tragic. Um, she uses well, she doesn't really use, but she employs the the um, services of Sinbad to assist her because he's the only one that can open the door to the dead and we learn why. It's very intriguing and I'm looking forward to second the second season because Sinbad's father is a very mysterious character. Uh, drunkard though he was. It makes you wonder um, who he is or if we're going to ever encounter him as the series continues. Um, I really like the aspect of the Cyclops, or the, the Cyclopses, Cyclopsi. In this episode, they were kind of like a, a manta ray that shone light on the intruders to the realm of the dead, and then they would put that person, and they were just locked in that stance. They couldn't move, they couldn't go anywhere, but they were forever entrapped in um, an alternate version of their existence is sort of like hell and um, it, it was just really uh, disturbing and Sinbad did not like what he saw in that vision and Taryn has to call him out and invoke him back into the world of the living um, while they're still in the world of the dead. Irony Paradox. Um, <laughs> this episode you had to suspend a lot of logic, and uh, especially when they were going through different rooms and they would have torches and then they wouldn't have torches. That was one flaw in this particular episode. Uh, one thing I, I really enjoyed were the hellhounds, even though I thought, why did they have to have hellhounds? But they, they had hellhounds and they were really creepy. And of course, the Cyclopses were really. Aw I like the Cyclopses better than the hellhounds. Because I just thought that it was such a cool care, it's a cool monster um, being, that the uh, ability that it had. I thought, whoa, that's that's awesome. Um, it's a it's a really nice version of a Cyclops, I think. Uh, a combination Cyclops Medusa, I thought. Uh, Cydusa? Yeah, I would say Cydusa. Give it my own name. Um, Cydusa all over the place. Cydusai all over the place. Um, they were in pursuit of Sinbad. Um, he makes good on helping Terran, and Terran becomes part of their crew. And I thought, I don't know, should should they trust her? Should they just toss her overboard after the the utter torment that she has put Sinbad and his friends through? I thought, oh, and, and Tiger most especially when she's employed as a bounty huntress and. Oh, 
Sinbad with his charm turns that on its ear very quickly. But anyhow, um, it, it gives you a lot to ponder for this next season, and it's just getting good. And uh, Jamil, uh, I almost cried. Well, I, I did cry actually a little bit, uh, but uh, we'll see what's going to happen next. I'm really excited to see what the creators have in mind for this show. I don't really know what direction it's taking. It could go any direction, but uh, so far, it's the best TV show I've seen in a good while, other than uh, Doctor Who or um, In the Flesh or Orphan Black or Copper. Um, there's a new show out called Broadchurch, and um, I'm going to be doing reviews of that as well. Uh, I'm hopeful to see, let's see, Elysium over the weekend, although I did not see District 9. I heard nothing but bad reviews about District 9, but I'm not really familiar with that whole um, story or realm. Uh, I'm really looking forward to Elysium. I just compare it to a, mo a, a live action Battle Angel Alita. Um, <clears throat> for obvious reasons, and the story's been done before. You have the the ultra elite or the affluent who live above in a world that's an, a utopia, and below them is the dystopia, the people that are forgotten, those who are still sick and alien and dying, and unable to deal with uh, even the common cold would probably kill somebody amongst the lower class of. Um, the world. Um, this was done in Star Trek. Of course, it was done in Battle Angel Alita. Uh, not sure where else it was done. On honestly, I'm sure it's been it's been done many times. Guess that whole um, combination and comparison contrast between utopia and dystopia, and of course. Uh, class. The, the whole idea of class or caste system, you can even say it that way, even though that sounds rather derogatory. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing, let's see, uh, Percy Jackson, even even though the first one had a gaping flaw in it, I did enjoy it, and I love mythology, so uh, I'm thinking that this one's going to top the first one. I don't even know if they're going to make any more Maybe they will. Maybe maybe this one will give them the extra oomph they need to, to make the entire series because I'd love to see that happen. If not, then there are rumors of Fablehaven becoming a, a movie and uh, hope to God, please let it be so, as well as uh, Alchemist, uh, which I absolutely love. As I, I've done the... That's my screen name, for gosh sakes. That's where I got it from Michael Scott's um, series on Nicholas Flamel. Um, <clears throat> all incarnations of Nicholas Lamel are welcome with me. Um, let me see. Uh, I also hope to see Planes. However, I'm probably going to wait for that to come out on DVD because I've heard nothing but bad reviews about it. It borrows a lot from Cars, and it seems kind of a kind of direct-to-video approach. But maybe I'll see it. Maybe I won't. It all depends. I love Pixar, but Cars really wasn't my Cars and Cars actually Cars 2 is better than the first one but I just I'm not really a, a big big fan even though I am a gearhead in the utmost respect I love all things transportation so when I heard that they were doing a planes movie I thought ah good finally elements of flight one of my favorite things but it's uh, I don't know I'm, I'm kind of iffy about it needless to say um Maybe I'll see it on DVD, but who knows. Of course, I want to see The Butler. Uh, I'm not really sure what else I'll be seeing, honestly. I'd like to see Kick-Ass, too, but I doubt very seriously that my dad will be taking me to see it, uh, even though I've seen the first one, and I absolutely loved it. It was so awesome. It was algebraic to the nth degree. Ugh. But I don't think that'll be happening of course, Mortal Instruments, that's definitely one that I will see in the um, cinema. Since I am currently reviewing the series, I haven't read the whole thing yet. I'm uh, reading the um, the fourth book in the series, which is City of um, Fallen Angels. 
or I said City of Lost Souls, the City of Fallen Angels, I do believe. But I, I'm not sure. I keep getting those last two uh, volumes of the series mixed up, and I'm sorry. Um, I don't want to really tick off a lot of pure fans out there, so please disregard me because I I do make mistakes. Um, other than that, I can't really say that I'm up to too much. Other than I got some songs I wanted I want to record that are written by me. Um, uh, parodies I'm, I'm working on. Um, a parody of uh, Innocent Man by Billy Joel, which I hadn't heard that song for years. I'm like, oh, Billy Joel, I I, I, uh, I love this song, uh, even though it's kind of a hard song to sing. And uh, Moves Like Jagger, I, I, I had wanted to do a parody of that for a while, even though it's kind, it's kind of body and it's uh, directed at myself and how I feel about myself sometimes, just uh, being blessed with a uh, couple of assets <laughs> that I can't really do anything about and I don't I wouldn't change it for anything in the world but it is what it is um I, I'm really looking forward to uh, putting that online as well as my parody of uh, Sailing by Christopher Cross which is one of my absolute uh, all time favorite songs and I know it sounds kind of like, oh, you like Christopher Cross? Yeah, I like Christopher Cross, what of it? And especially Arthur's theme. If you fall in love with the moon in New York City. I just, you know, I, I would like to do a parody of that too, but I don't know what I would do with it. But it's a wonderful song, nonetheless. Um, I don't know. I've just been so busy with everything that uh, life's been keeping me on its toes. Doesn't look like I'm going to be doing a nice uh, CCT exam for a while. Uh, hmm. I'll just have to wait and see what's to come. And uh, if anything else happens, you'll be the first to know, my loyal fans. Until next time, ciao! <laughs>